Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep, clear enough. I'm not the best with mics. Okay. So a lot of the poems that I write, um, well, they, they tend to connect to the art of relating, as I mentioned earlier. I love writing about relationships, so I'm going to do just that because that's, that's my joy. And so I want to... I'm doing, a, I'm doing about four of them at, to, at this, this particular section, um, and they're all, all connected to a relationship um, that I have with someone or something. And the first one is a dedication and an expression of love towards my beautiful father, my late father, who I often refer to as my ascended master in the sky. And so I really want to take a couple of minutes to connect in with his beautiful spirit and our connection that goes beyond time. Because what I love to do is to let love transform, let love evolve, and let love grow and crystallize through my poetry. And it's through poetry I get to really connect in with the truth and the belief that love continues to live on. And I get to connect with my dad in such a sacred way. And it's through these words that I get to share love with him. And so I want to do that tonight with all of you. So this is a pretty old one. This is called Petals for Paradise. And I wrote this in 2012, which was the year he actually ascended. I felt your light reach up towards my palm, as if you were jumping up from the other side. Your grave was fizzing onto my fingers. Light splutters across the universe from your dimension to mine in the shape of some beautiful delusion. So we will speak now amongst folds of flowers. I drop my crumpled mind into the crinkles of orchids. My fragrant pain finds itself splashing across you from the hot blush of rose water, fresh and trembling, every petal your petrified daughter collapsing into the gardens of your rest. Stay with me. Are you listening through these flowers? You smile at me through tattered jasmine, amongst rain and restless ants, and I have no choice but to translate your voice and hear you now through songs of streetlights and scars. I use Carlos Santana to shape the color of your soul and Pink Floyd to find its form. I used to... That's probably him. <laughs> I used to hear you in suits. Now I feel you in streams. Thank you. So the next one is also about him, and it really honors the passing of time, Earthside. And I wrote this in honor of his 10th year of ascension. So it was his death anniversary in March this year. And this is called Unconditional Dreaming. Today marks the completion of a 10-year tour around the sun with you. They say the meaning of a chord changes according to its relation with another harmony. And when I speak to you, I pretend to understand a bit more about music and space. I find their semantic feels a supportive place to celestially interface from in order to make sure I'll never dislocate my feelings towards you or replace you into a vacuum of nihilism and non-existence. Because you're present, you're coming through, through my poetry, the only medium that seems to move comfortably with my musings on your metaphysicality.
gifting me wonder, full permission to be out there. Poetry is the only spiritual medium that invites me to redefine in my own time how your spirit decided to realign as crystalline structures of energy and light. So it makes sense to gift poetry with poetry tonight. The frequency of a father's love for his daughter can shift on any given day. Today, on the 10th year of your ascension, there's no right or wrong way to pray as long as truth pulses through my veins, as long as I breathe and be here now. Today, everything's a galaxy in my eyes. I saw the swirls in my morning iced coffee too. Today, there's no right or wrong way to be. I just need to hear my own heartstrings and tell it how it is. Over sunrise, I felt a bubble of euphoric bliss, but as I write this now, those sensations are amiss. Can I let go and trust what, what becomes of this sacred mist? It's no surprise that today, I decide to do what we do best, despite shaky hand and pounding chest. I speak to and in between the stardust, through the voice of art coming from my heart, and today, I communicate to you through a cardio session and a cosmic playlist of classic drum and bass because this is how I transform grief into grace. And tonight, I have no reason and every right to believe you are 8.6 light years away in space. And maybe your force is felt from one of the 17 solar flares this week. On your late father's ascension day, Always make room in your backpack for a star-shaped amethyst crystal, the scarf he gave to you, a furious fountain pen to write down bits of bittersweet beauty wanting to break through. Ten years ago today, I felt robbed by space and violet dust, like I had fallen for a sick trick between time and stars, like some kind of thick purple vapor smothered me, like I was being nailed down by a galaxy of longing, sharp enough to wake my spirit up from my college dorm bed. Eyes wide open, gazing on to glow, gazing on to glow in the dark stickers above my head. And now I close my eyes and keep listening and learning how to fly away and come back to the belief that every breath is beautiful. Once upon a time, I was the twinkle in your eye, and now it's you that's transpired into lyrics of the sky. Sometimes we surprise ourselves with those lines we come up with. Speaking to the ethers feels right tonight. I'm really trying my best here to pull down a poem from the heavens. I felt the need to get up and do something in the night once the moon is out for musicians to tune their amps as they select particular frequencies of beauty and pain sound waves. And whenever I hear a guitar solo, I love and imagine you running electric wind through my hair. Because this isn't goodbye, just another way of loving one another, your soul transmogrified through cyclical echoes of light, music, and color. On a night like this, I long for guitar strings, knowing it's the quickest, surest way back to you and my inner childhood, where I listened out for the warmth of the familiar pluck of chord G, the one I heard when we'd wear matching dungarees, on days you'd find me sticking your golf tees in my hair. At that time, I didn't think to care too much for creative expression. I could have found and read a poem from one of the years, but they don't feel that alive to us anymore. I'm trying my best here to pull down that poem from the heavens. Sometimes your daughter finds it hard to find a quiet moment in time to dance in the moonlight again. So here, at the conjunction of words and space, does she find a place to breathe into some sentences of starlight? Tonight, she wishes better metaphors and imagery were on her side. It's hard to let the perfectionist subside on a night like this. So speaking into the ethers feels right tonight, alongside poets, musicians alike, who maybe like me sometimes lean ourselves into language, sigh into vowels and cling on to, cl cling on to clusters of consonants to shape a little more control 
to have a little more hold on our lives. But tonight I won't run away into figurative language and the flowers on my skirt, the ones I skipped with under streetlights down Swanston Street, unaware of how the stars were slowly rearranging timelines. What more can I disclose tonight? The stars have heard everything, and so has your light. Celestial visions are all that I'm seeing, but I'll never forget that you are once a human being. Yeah, I really like that one, and I wanted to share that one because of the theme of tonight and, yeah, this beautiful blend of art and creativity and relationships and allowing that love to transform. And, um, yeah, I've got a real appreciation for musicians, because I'm not one myself, but I can really draw a lot of inspiration from musicians and creatives. So a lot of my work... A lot of my poetry reflects this. It reflects what I see and what I feel when I connect with them. And so this is about someone that I had a connection with. And I'm really grateful to say that he's here tonight. <laughs> and it's really lovely how we've reconnected in this beautiful form of friendship. And he said he, he doesn't mind me reading a poem about him, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> but yeah, this is also an expression of how much magic is out there if we're open to it, if we want to see it that way. So this is called Move the Way You Want and Find Opportunities Around You. The space between 101 Collins Street and a beer garden on Flinders Lane may have brewed a reunion between a pair of flames. You told me you played keys and used DJ decks to operate portals of energy. I express to you I've made the choice to let go and live in a love-based reality. For two months, I embodied a hungry ghost down at Melbourne Theatre Company, felt unanchored and was ghosted myself, but now I'm kissing the earth again, finally. I want to see the world through more magic, art, beauty, and poetry, I confess to you. I only made this switch last Thursday, actually. I even wrote it down in my lunar diary. <laughs> After an hour, we shifted from your SUV to a cocktail bar's booth. In the lounge of an electric lady, we grounded ourselves in seats of truth. Tonight, we focused on the signal and not the noise and transited away from the tunes of Alice in Wonderland girls and Stardust boys. How could we rate a ride that was dissolving into destiny as we disclosed our passion for crystals, nature, and conscious intimacy? There was an urge for me to share with you my special seraphonite. It was met with the sight of your hand holding on to a piece of hematite. I smiled and tried to fish around for more hidden gems in my back pocket while you grinned and pulled out from underneath your t-shirt your hidden amethyst locket. With a semi-precious stone in our palms, our guts spiraled in surprise as synchronicities steamed up our cores and recharged a light in our eyes. Serendipity's winter stay in the city made it clear for us to see that we were always two bodies yearning to flow into the waves of one frequency. How could we rate this ride that was dissolving towards destiny? Five stars to Melbourne's unpredictable late night PTV. Five stars to me for feeling like staying in my own energy. Five stars to you for answering yes to a request from me at 11.43. Uber and the universe have one thing in common with each other. If you're open to trusting their services, I guarantee they will deliver. <laughs> and here's another one because that's just how inspired I get <laughs> and I really love this one 
because I think it's a beautiful reflection of how you can find so much light in another person. And so this is called Light Working in St. Kilda. I hold up my malachite and I'm reminded of the mollusk that you bent down to pick up to place back into his rock pool home down at Point Road Night. When we met, I told myself, what a blessing from the 808 Lionsgate portal, a reward for many moons of manifestations, meditations, and shamanic activations, that this was to be a preparation and initiation towards an outcome grander, and that we were just spiritually awakened beings light working down in St. Kilda for the day, and the universe planted you in my path in some way to eventually teach me detachment. A little love you and leave you lesson, maybe. Hold on tightly, let go lightly. But then you take me. You take me through this path of least resistance. You release and rush into my ley lines like an elixir of liquid lightning and you're gleaming now, gallant, cleansed, clear quads transparent. It's arresting to see that solar storm kind of attention you bear through your facial expressions when you finally believe in the beauty of your own energy breaking through the surfaces of my skin to reveal your charge of thunderstorming within. I hear your power as you rediscover your strides into the shards of dawn with me. I become a blended bandwidth of blue, green, and gold as I breathe in the bass lines of our bioluminescent soul, and I can still smell a forest on us. Your movements are muscular, multi-tembral invitations into a smudging of earthy synth and astral ash. Your syncopations of spirit and silence pitch bends my body to ground. Your spirit and silence anchors my awareness into this space of sacred sound. And sometimes it's through your music where I hear you glisten with emotion, pure and simple, like light hitting a crystal. And it's this innocence that I love listening to that makes me trust in all chords of you. This ecstasy doesn't want to be written to scale as you surround me now with your sonorous shale. Your melodies move me towards an underwater ascension. You hold me up in suspension towards quivers of black and shivers of silver. What's this orchestration? What's the true sheen of surrender? Is it colored by the act of diving deeper or rising higher to give in to the desire for air? And when we go down that great ocean road, your car tends to get fogged up by galactic dew and glinting critters, and it always seems to rain outside. I think it's so we can drive under rib cages of rainbows and feel the stubble of the sun sinking with our diaphragms. At the same time as a kyanite sky, as she sings to us her most radiant and open song. I mean, it was through these chords of synchronicity that we came to be and you will always be a prism to an iridescent reality. I've always resisted luminosity, but here you were beaming at me like a top grade polished pyrite flecked lapis lazuli. <laughs> I'm in love with your light because of how much you love to give your light away. I can't capture your resonance, nor would I try to portray your essence, something I initially immediately wanted to run away from because it was made up of a song that felt closest to home. Too deep to deny, too easeful to embrace, this place you may try and run away from, but always return to. In truth, your light never lies to me. It only lies with. Thank you for listening. Woo!